Hello, this is Tannen Auto Electronics again. Today we're working on a Lexus SC300. This applies to all Lexus SC300 and 400s. Uh, we're working on the ECU removal right now. So, ECU is behind here. All you need to do is pull this carpet back. Remove the two 10 millimeter nuts found here and here. And then remove this plate. Once that plate is out of the way, you see the ECU. Here it is. Uh, there's going to be a couple more 10 millimeter nuts holding it in. Just remove those and then remove the harness and then the ECU is out. If you're planning on sending your ECU to repair, you can visit our website. Uh, listed at the bottom of this video and uh, fill out a work order form found on the website send it in we perform all types of repairs on the ECU uh, ranging from the basic capacitor replacement that's common on these models to uh, more complicated board repair so let us know what problems you're having and we can let you know if we can fix it thanks now this segment's on our ECU rebuild service and just some information about the ECU. Um, so when you get an ECU back or install a new ECU or disconnect the battery and reconnect it, your first startup is probably going to be rough. It's not going to run right and I'll explain it after this. So the idle is super low. It sounds like it's going to die and it dies. So. This is basically your ECU has to relearn the vehicle. Um, you're clearing out the, the memory of the ECU, the, the fuel trims, and everything else. And after a few minutes, it should stabilize, start running better. And we'll check that engine code in a bit and see what that is. But don't be alarmed if you know things aren't great the first few minutes after um, reconnecting your battery or installing an ECU. Alright, that's it for this section. Uh, we'll be back for the next. Alright, so very important here. Make sure your ECU is grounded to the body. That's this nut right here. And then make sure all three connectors are fully seated. This one on the left has a 10 millimeter bolt that uh, pulls it into the ECU. Um, don't mind that the, uh, the ECU is uncovered here. We're just doing some testing on this vehicle. Or that the AC kicked on. Um, so when you get your ECU back, it's best to disconnect the battery before you do any work or take anything apart. Um, reconnect the ECU, hook up the battery, and start the vehicle. And you shouldn't have any issues. There shouldn't be any irregularities. This car is a cold, it's a, it's a cold start, so the idle's a little bit higher until it warms up. You shouldn't have a check engine light. Uh, reason we did prior, there was a, another issue with this vehicle that we got cleared up. Um, an AFM sensor error and a TPS sensor error um, that could have been caused by an unseated connector at the ECU or an ungrounded ECU um, but likely the connector was not fully seated and sometimes that'll cause issues where the, con the connections aren't made to the sensors and then you have a check engine light and things don't work right so this car is running fine, the ECU is good, and um, that should help you in your in your process figuring out how to take it out, send it into us, reinstall it correctly. And uh, the speedometer has been done by us in the past, as well as the climate control of the radio. So our address is on the bottom. Uh, you can give us a call, send us a message, however you want to get a hold of us. Let us know what problems you have and how we can help you. We do um, ECU repair, radio repair, climate control speedometers for all vehicles, 1990 to the present. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye.
right, this last section is going to show how to check engine codes on a pre-OBD2 Lexus. This is an SC300. Um, this is under the driver's fuse box area by the pedals. And what you want to do is connect TE1 to E1 with a piece of wire. And then once you do that, when you turn the key to the on position, if everything is good, the check engine light is going to flash continually. If there's a problem, it's going to it's going to pulse different uh, speeds. It's going to pulse uh, like a slow two blinks and then a fast five blinks. And for example, that would be code 25, and then you'd look up online what that means. But in this case, there's nothing wrong. That is the most basic method of how to check codes. You can start the car like that. That's still going to blink. When you take out the wire, it goes away. So that's how to check engine codes if you're having an ECU issue. Always check the codes first to see what, where the problem is. Maybe it's not an ECU problem, maybe it's something with the sensor or something in the engine. But before you send in the ECU, make sure to check the codes and take care of any issues that might um, be happening with your engine. So that's all we got for today. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.